Hello, and welcome to a brand new day of free-to-play here on Magic the Gathering Arena. Get the dish on the latest with me, Lord Rumfish. We're going to talk about uh, the green-blue archetype today. So, green-blue is a transformation archetype, um, at least at face value. Uh, that's, that's what the uh, signpost uncommons uh, are kind of leading you towards. This is Mutagen Connoisseur. Is a green, a blue, and a colorless. It's a 0 5 flying vigilance, so a very good blocker. And it gets plus 1 plus 0 for each transformed permanent you control. And this counts for those little uh, incubator tokens. So, Mutagen Connoisseur, it's going to grow slowly, but um, if you have a decent chunk of transform stuff in your deck. Over the course of a long game, you know, it'll get to three, four, or five power eventually. And in the meantime, it's going to keep you alive. So I, I think this is fine for a deck that wants to be a little slower, wants a good blocker early, and a good uh, threat late game. I think this card's just fine. Up next, we've got the Uncommon Battle, Invasion of Pyrulia. Uh, green and a blue. Uh, it's a battle with four defense. And when it ETBs, you scry three, which is a pretty deep look at the top of your library. Then you reveal the top card, and if it's a land or a double-faced card, you draw it. Uh, would have been much nicer if they uh, let you play the land, but... Uh, still, I, I think this battle's okay. You know, it, it's not the most exciting, but it is a, um, you know, draws you a card, smooths out your deck a little bit, and uh, gives you another permanent to transform. So probably if you're in the color combination, likely you would want to go ahead and run this. And since it can find you a double face card, the more of those you have in the deck, the better. Uh, Corruption of Tawashi is an enchantment. It's uh, blue and four colorless. Uh, when it ETBs, you incubate four. So uh, if you manage to flip this over, it's going to be a four four. And whenever a permanent you control transforms or enters the battlefield transformed, you may draw a card. You do this only once each turn. Uh, but you can incubate at instant speed. Uh, which means you can draw a card on the opponent's turn using this card as well. So, this isn't the most powerful. Um, it takes a total of 7 mana to get the 4-4, but you get to pay it in installments. Uh, because it's not that powerful, other decks are less likely to poach this from you. And this will give you a draw engine, um, that helps get you through uh, into the late game. It keeps keeps you finding fuel in your transform deck. Eyes of Gataxius, I think this will be kind of a bread and butter card for you. So it's a sorcery for three. You incubate three and you draw a card. Now unfortunately for Invasion of Pyrulia, this card is not double-faced, but uh, this is kind of like a 3-3 three, three for 5 that enters the battlefield to draw you a card, which would be playable, uh, but you get to break up the mana in installments, and I think that makes this card actually pretty decent. Oculus Whelp is going to be pretty good in the deck. Um, it's a 3-2 flyer for 4, as long as you have a transformed permanent, then it uh, draws you a card when it dies. So a 3 power flyer for 4 is a pretty decent deal, and one that draws you a card when it dies is um, quite good. Omen Hawker is going to be a solid card for you. This is an enabler. Um, a lot of things that transform, such as the incubator tokens and the uh, double face cards, have activated mana abilities. So Omen Hawker is going to let you... Uh, double flip or double spell, you know, be able to make better use of your mana over the course of the game. Uh, 
Omenhawker, you don't want too many of them, but it takes the deck from being incredibly grindingly slow to actually um, pretty quick. Blighted Burgeoning. Um, I think this uh, Enchant Land is going to be pretty good in the green-blue archetype, including the uh, bonus archetype we'll get to in a minute. So whenever the Enchant Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. And when this ETBs, you incubate two. Uh, and sneakily, if you do this with four mana, um, you can use three of it, enchant a land, and then you've got two mana available to go ahead and uh, use the incubator token. Tangled Skyline is going to be pretty solid in this deck. Um, a lot of the cards you're going to be looking for that are double-faced, or uh, if you've got incubators, are going to be Phyrexians, at least when they flip over. And Tangled Skyline is going to gain you 5 life and give your Phyrexians reach immediately. Uh, you also incubate 5, so for 2 more mana you can get a 5-5. Five five. Um, and it's going to have reach from this uh, enchantment. So, a uh, total investment of 7 mana, you get to pay 2 of it um, as an installment. And I, I just think in green-blue this is going to be very solid. Um, you're going to have all of these transformed Phyrexians. Giving them all reach is going to uh, kind of... This is a stabilizing force in your deck. It lets you, uh, you know, take over the game with your more expensive uh, activations and cards. So in blue-green, with caring about transform so much, um, you're likely to take the off-color ones as well. Captive Weird is a 1-3 defender. Uh, when you transform it for, th for 3 and 2 life... Uh, you get a 3-3, three, three, exiles the top card of your library, until the end of your next turn you can play it, so you're very likely to be able to play it. Order of the Mirror is a 2-1 two, for 2. Uh, you can pay 3 and 2 life to transform it. it turns into a 3-3 three, three that's difficult to block, because it gives uh, the blocking creatures minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Uh, kind of like flanking. Skyclave Aerialist, this is a 2-1 flyer for 2 mana. Uh, you can pay a 4 and 2 life or a green to transform it, since you're in the colors. And it turns into the Skyclave Invader. It's 2-4, uh, so it picks up toughness. Uh, you also get to look at the top card. If it's a land, you can put it right on the battlefield. And if it's uh, not a land, you get to put it into your hand. So, get a card either way. Uh, Bonded Herd Beast is a 4-5 for 5. You can pay 4 and 2 life to transform it. Turns into the Plated Kiln Beast, a 7-5 Menace. Just a big old uh, chunk of stuff. Uh, Nothold Hermit, this one's exciting. This is a 4-4 four, four for 4. You can pay 5 and 2 life or a blue. And transform it into the Chrome Host Hulk. So this turns into a 5-5, five, five, but whenever it attacks, up to one other target creature has base power and toughness 5-5. Five, five. This is really, really good with an incubator token. It's also really good with the 0-5 uh, signpost uncommon that gets plus one power for every transformed permanent. Um, in both of those cases, it started at a base power of zero. So it gets the boost of all of the plus one counters, or in the case of the uncommon, it gets the plus one power boost for every transform permanent on top of the boost from this. If you have something like that out, then this is going to add 10 power and toughness when you attack. And, uh, whew, that seems well worth your effort. And there's a Herbology Instructor. It's a 1 3 for 2, uh, gain 3 life when it ETBs. Um, so this is a good stabilizing uh, presence in the early game. Uh, you can pay 6 and 2 life to transform it. You get a Malady Invoker, and it'll give an opponent's creature minus 0, minus X, uh, where X is this thing's power. So uh, you'll, you'll take out like a 3 toughness creature over on the other side. Okay, so that hits up the high notes of what I wanted to talk about as far as the transform archetype. But... There's another archetype in green-blue, 
and it looks like a lot of fun. It also looks pretty straightforward. Um, let's jump right into it. Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty, is on the bonus sheet here. It's an uncommon. So this is a 5-mana 3-1, which sounds terrible, but actually it's pretty good. It has Cascade. So when you cast this, you're going to uh, keep looking at cards from the top of your library until you find a non-land card that costs less mana than a Modi. Anything for or less. Uh, you cast it without paying its mana cost, then you put the rest on the bottom in a random order. And Emoti says spells you cast with mana value 6 or greater have Cascade. So Emoti is uh, one of the signpost uncommons for Cascade Ramp. So uh, you really want to hit things that are mana value 6 or higher uh, in order to trigger off this uh, Cascade. And uh, the other big signpost for this uh, archetype, since it's a ramp deck, is none other than Copper Host Crusher. Uh, people are probably not going to be fighting you for this card because 8 mana is too much for most decks to pay. Uh, this is 2 green and 6. Uh, it's an 8-8 eight, eight Trample Hexproof. There's a lot of cards with big mana costs in the set, but most of them have Convoke. This one does not. Uh, this one takes uh, 8 mana straight up. Uh, as Jim Davis might say, this is a honking chonker. <laughs> so, um, you know, people are going to be telling you that this card is like a trap, and it is unless you're ramping, unless you build the deck in order to actually take advantage of this card. And if you take in Modi, then you're going to get a cascade off of this 8 mana guy. That doesn't mean you won't hit like a 2 mana card when you cast him, but if your deck is full of, you know, 6 drops and things, there's at least a chance when you cast the Copper Rose Crusher you could hit one of those 6 drops when you cast this guy. And uh, that, would be, that would be quite the nice payoff for having set up your deck in such a way that you can get to 8 mana. So how do you get to 8 mana? Invasion of Zendikar is an uncommon battle. Um, it's just got three defense. When it ETBs, you search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle. So this card by itself takes you from four mana to six mana. And if you get a land drop, then you hit seven mana. So one Invasion of Zendikar puts you a long, long way. Uh, towards getting to the Copper Host Crusher. Um, you know, a lot of decks may not need this much ramp. You know, going from 4 to 6 or even 7 may be bigger than a lot of decks are even thinking about trying to get to. But if you, if you want to hit 8 mana, you're going to need multiple of these types of effects. So let's look at some of the other ways to ramp. Uh, Portent Tracker is a card you might consider. Um, you do care about transforming things, which means you might care about battles to some extent. So uh, the card is not just for uh, red-green necessarily. Untapping a land here is the part that gets you to the mana you need. Overgrown Pest is just a solid card whichever way you're going. Uh, it can find you a double face card. It can also find you a land. Uh, this, this is just a really good bread and butter common for the deck. Kami of Whispered Hopes is more so for the plus one counter deck, but if you're in the ramp portion, then you'll be giving this card a look, uh, just for its ability to tap and add mana. If you can pump its power, it makes more mana. Fertilid's Favor is a weird one. Uh, it's a four mana instant. Uh, fetches you a basic land, gets down tapped, and then you put two plus one plus one counters on an artifact or creature. It's at instant speed, so it is a combat trick. Uh, if you're trying to get to eight mana, you really need to run a lot of ramp. And Fertilid's Favor can at least impact the board when you cast it. Uh, again, I think Blighted Burgeoning is going to be key in the ramp portion of the deck as well. Alright, so let's look at some six drops. Um, Thunderhead Squadron is made for the Convoke deck. It's 
a 3-4 flyer for 6. It's not going to be the best for you. But um, mana is another way to get there. And uh, if you're looking to trigger a Modi and get your Cascades, then uh, Thunderhead Squadron is a way to do it. Tidal Terror is more often the card you're going to be wanting in order to uh, hit the Cascade triggers. 5-6 uh, six for 6 is a good presence on the battlefield, and it uh, has an ability to be unblocked, which can let you close out the game. Um, the, uh, the Cyclers are nice because early they can also help you find the mana that you need, and you do need a lot of it. Timberland Ancient um, is a Reach Trampler, so it's got some nice keywords. It's a 6-5. And again, it's got Forest Cycling, so it helps smooth out your mana, um, keep hitting your land drops. Um, basically, these do the things you really need to do in the ramp deck. They're great in the late game. They're, uh, they do something in the early game. Phyrexian Archivist is fine here. Um, you have better creatures that you have access to, but um, if for some reason you, uh, <laughs> you, you get cut off from some of the six drops that you want to play and you're not hitting a critical threshold of them, Phyrexian Archivist is fine. A uh, 4 5 reach is a good presence on the battlefield. It can even help you from milling out. Or uh, shut off your opponent's uh, graveyard uh, synergy if they need you to have eight or more cards in the graveyard. You can turn that off. And finally, if you're looking to make a little splash in the deck, which is not hard to do with ramp, right, you've got so much mana acceleration and mana fixing that it's really not that difficult to add a little splash color into the deck. Uh, Invasion of Lorwyn. Um, Emoti doesn't just trigger off of creatures. It's any six mana spell. So Invasion of Lorwyn can give you a removal spell on the front side and then pays you back for ramping up to uh, six or more mana by giving you this creature with power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control on the back side. Uh, so I think this would be a very reasonable uh, splash inclusion into the deck. Now the other thing that's neat is you can uh, splash in a bunch of crazy multicolored uh, rares <laughs> because you can probably hit the mana for them. You can probably produce it in this deck. So, uh, just just some crazy stuff, you know, like uh, the the card that's got like Galta on it, stuff like that. Uh, ramp is fun. It's also pretty straightforward, and uh, with a Modi out, you're going to get these Cascade triggers, and it's just going to be ridiculous. <laughs> Most of the little stuff you hit in your deck are going to be, you know, other ramp pieces and enablers and, you know, just kind of little creatures, but this is in addition to your big six drop plays and things that you're making. And again, the Copper Hose Crusher can hit these six drop things for you off the Cascade triggers. So, uh, that's it. It's pretty much what I've got to say about the archetype. I think it'll be fun whether you're transforming or whether you're ramping. And uh, until next time, stay cool.